If you'll turn to your scripture passage in your bulletin, I love the phrase that is in Exodus 3, wide open spaces. And this is God's promise to Moses and the children of Israel. And because you and I are Christians, we're spiritual descendants of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and also of Moses. So this wide open spaces, this inner freedom that it talks about in this passage is part of our heritage, your heritage and my heritage. Moses was shepherding the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the west end of the wilderness and came to the mountain of God, Horeb. The angel of God appeared to him in flames of fire blazing out of the middle of a bush. He looked. The bush was blazing away, but it didn't burn up. Moses said, what is going on here? I cannot believe this. Amazing. Why doesn't the bush burn up? God saw that he had stopped to look. God called to him from out of the bush, Moses, Moses. He said, yes, I'm right here. God said, don't come any closer. Remove your sandals from your feet. You're standing on holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, afraid to look at God. God said, I've taken a good long look at the affliction of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries for deliverance from their slave masters. I know all about their pain. And now I have come down to help them, pry them loose from the grip of Egypt, get them out of that country, and bring them to a good land with wide open spaces, a land lush with milk and honey the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. May God help us find this scripture to come alive to us in our own lives today as we study it. All of us long for inner freedom. All of us long for wide open spaces. I love living in northeast Kansas with its rolling hills, it's forested valleys, and it's tall grass prairie highlands. But occasionally I like to get out in central and western Kansas where it's really wide open, really flat and wide open. There's a tremendous freedom. Uh, it's hard to explain the freedom of, of the wide open spaces. But an even more important wide open spaces and freedom is being talked about here in this conversation between God and Moses. Moses was a shepherd. He used to be a prince in Egypt. All the Egyptian wise men had trained him. He'd been treated like Pharaoh's daughter. He was royalty in Egypt. He never forgot the fact that he was Hebrew, but he was raised with royalty. He spoke perfect Egyptian. When uh, General Schwarzkopf was raised in Saudi Arabia and he learned perfect Arabic. So when he was negotiating with the Iraqi people at the conclusion of, the, of Desert Storm, it absolutely blew their mind that he was speaking absolute perfect Arabic to them. And when Moses came to the Pharaoh later on, he spoke perfect, classic, highbrow Egyptian language. But he had murdered an Egyptian who'd been persecuting the Hebrew slave. And Pharaoh saw that he was still, he looked like an Egyptian, but he was still Hebrew at heart. And Moses had to, he was 40 years old when he killed that Egyptian, 
He spent 40 years in the wilderness. He was 80 years old when this took place. I used to fight forest fires, and, and there's some in dry country like uh, Saudi Arabia and the Sinai Peninsula, there's what they call creosote bushes. And creosote is the right word because those things are absolutely full of oil. And when they catch on fire, they just explode. I mean, it's almost scary. It's almost like somebody had poured gasoline on them. They just explode. And, and he was watching a, one of these desert uh, bushes just explode in fire. But he lived in the desert for 40 years. And the fire was not going out. And so he stopped, not realizing that God had set this whole thing up. And he was amazed. It didn't go out. It just kept blazing away. It's when we stop and look at life that God can speak to us. So Moses was saying to himself, like, what's going on here? I can't believe it. And remember, there's just a bunch of sheep around there. I imagine you and I might say something to ourselves like that too. No one to just sheep could hear us. And God spoke to him out of the bush. Why doesn't this bush burn up? Moses stood there and was still. If you want God to speak to you, stand in the presence of God and be still. God called him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. Now, this is a little bit of a twist for you, but you're in church today. You are Moses. And God is speaking your name today. And, and he's saying, I've got something to tell you. If you stop in the presence of God and are still, God will guide you in absolutely amazing ways. God will speak to you in absolutely amazing ways. And if God calls your name when you're at home or here in this worship service or on YouTube, if God calls your name, respond like Moses and, and say, yes, I'm right here. This happens several times in the Bible. I won't go to those other passages. But if we say, yes, I'm right here, God will say exactly the same thing to you. Okay, you're standing in my presence, or you're kneeling in my presence, or whatever. This is a holy place, because I'm speaking to you. And the ground you are standing on, or kneeling on, or sitting on, is holy ground. Take off your sandals, take off your shoes. One little hidden thing in this passage is that Moses began to realize after this point in time, every place he walked was holy ground because God was with him. And I want to tell you this, brothers and sisters, everywhere you go, if you ask God to be with you, is holy ground, and God will always be with you. And you're going to go, no matter what your age or background or job or family situation, you're going to go through some really tough times like Moses did, Moses at the back of his mind in his subconscious always realized that God had spoken to him by name and that God was always with him even when all these terrible things happened in Egypt when he tried to free the children of Israel and that he was never alone. And I really hope from this passage today you remind yourself constantly, I am never alone. Everywhere I go is holy ground because I have heard God speaking to me personally by my name. God knows all our names. And he's constantly reaching out to us every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But we are so busy and active, we don't stop and listen. And Moses did. 
Then God said to Moses, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Jesus used the same word. I am means something in the Hebrew language that it doesn't in English. It's basically the name for God. And so hundreds of years later, they asked uh, Jesus who he was, and he said, I am. And oh, by the way, I am sent me. In other words, the same God that appeared to Moses, I am, sent Jesus, who was the living I am. Moses was afraid to look at God. You and I are afraid to look at God, too. And you know what we're primarily afraid of looking at? We're afraid of looking at God's incredible goodness, God's incredible love, and God's incredible power. It's not like we're afraid of looking at God because he's mean and controlling and has a bad attitude towards us. We're afraid of God's goodness, which means we're afraid of our own goodness. We're afraid of our own goodness more than we're afraid of our own sin. One of the little interesting spiritual and psychological twists of spirituality is you and I are afraid that if we really accepted God's goodness and really accepted our own goodness, we're afraid that we might not be able to control our lives. So often we just cling to this fear and we never will look at God. And this is true of Christians as well as non-believers. We're afraid to fully sell our souls to God for fear of becoming too good ourselves. I don't know if that's possible or not. I, don't think, I think that's a needless fear. But we're afraid of being as good as we possibly can be. And let me tell you, that's, that's a lie. You won't be any more happier in all your life when gradually you let God's goodness flow into you every day. You'll be happy. You'll enjoy life. Then God said to Moses, I've taken a good long look at the affliction of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries for deliverance from their slave masters and I know all about their pain. God knows all about your cries, and God knows all about the pain you're going through right now. He knows everything about the pain that you're going through right now, and God wants to come down and help you and pry you loose from the grip of Egypt. Egypt is a symbol here in this passage for you and me. It's that you and I have been slaves in Egypt. We've been slaves to the things of this world, and God wants to pry us loose so that we can be free in wide open spaces. And it, it takes a lot of prying for you and me to be free from this world and quit being slaves to the things of this world. It's, it's really important, though, that we're set free. And so... The grip of Egypt, prying you loose from the grip of Egypt, God is saying to us, this world is not your home. You're just a passing through. Your real treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. And so allow God to pry you loose from the grips of this world, the things that grip you in this world, and bring you to a good land with wide open spaces, a land lush with milk and honey. Now we're going to go to the Purcell Catholic Church and have lunch today right after this worship service. And their food's going to be good, but it's nothing like the milk and honey which is being talked about here in this scripture. It's true food that God is speaking about. When God talks about the land of Canaan, being a land of milk and honey, and when the Jewish people and the Hebrew people talk about it that way, they're talking about something more than just milk and honey. They're talking about true spiritual food, truly feeling at home 
in a wide open place of freedom. And notice all the other people that are being asked to leave because of the Hebrew people, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Prezites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And if you read the Hebrew scriptures, the reason they were asked to leave is because they were not following the true God. They were sacrificing their own children. They were doing all kinds of, of terrible things which go against every one of the Ten Commandments. And so the real teaching point of this, this scripture here today is, and this is right out of the scripture which I just read you, God knows your name. God knows your cries. He's heard your cries. God knows your pain, the pain that you're in right now. And God has freedom for you like you've never known before in your entire life. It's an inner freedom. You can be in prison and still have wide open spaces. You can be trapped in a hospital bed and still be free, free. Thank God Almighty I'm free in your soul. God has this eternity of freedom just for you. And I know I'm speaking to, to several people today and to myself when I say, for years you have longed for wide open spaces. For years your heart has longed for God. And God wants to give you wide open spaces in your heart more than any possessions, any earthly joys can bring you. This longing that you and I have to be whole people can't be filled just psychologically or sociologically or with wealth or with power. The only thing that can feel that longing for wide open spaces and freedom in your heart and my heart is the daily presence of a loving God who knows you by name and when you are still will always speak to you, will always come to you, will always be with you, and will always love you. Amen.